behind me is my father's 2006 Holiday Rambler Vacationer Diesel Pusher Bus. Uh, last year we actually upgraded this bus, which never had an inverter, and we installed a uh, Magnum 2000 watt uh, inverter, which has converted the bus to an all-electric coach, just like our coach. Now, with the addition of an inverter, my father's now using more power, and he's asked us about our solar solution, but he's on a bit of a budget. So today we are going to attempt to install a pretty decent sized solar array for under 1200 bucks. So today's video is gonna be a little different than other videos I've done in that the technology that we're going to be implementing, I haven't had a lot of direct experience with. With most of the videos that we do, I've tested them for a minimum of three to six months. I understand how they work either in our bus or in previous projects that I've worked on. But today we're going to go a little bit different in that we're using stuff that I've purchased on Amazon that is not necessarily name brand. Uh, it does have high positive reviews and that's why we purchased it, but this is a proof of concept video. Will this work? Can you install a system that's 320, 650 watts or so, 6, 640, 650 in a bus like this for under $1,200? That's a lot of power for not very much money. Before we get started and we start talking about getting up on the roof, we're going to do some prep work. So to start, we are going to mount our solar panel roof mounting brackets. These are Renology brackets to the panels so that we're ready once we get up on the roof to start securing them. Uh, we did not go with a tilting solution here. Uh, on our bus we did go with tilting. On my father's we did not, mainly because he just doesn't feel like he's going to go up there and tilt them on a regular basis. At the heart of our system, besides the panels on the roof, is our solar charge controller. And we've got an MPPT solar charge controller in this setup that's a made in China product that I found on Amazon that has very high reviews. Now, buying stuff made in China, obviously the, the good news is the prices are lower, the bad news is any type of tech support or warranty efforts are gonna be hard. Uh, that being said, this is a 40 amp MPPT, and if you don't know what that means, essentially it allows me to put higher input voltage from the roof and use smaller wires into the solar controller, and it will convert that back to 12 volts. That's one positive of the MPPT, and the second is that it's a bit more efficient in terms of how it deals with the sun moving throughout the day. That's a vast oversimplification, but you can Google that term and it'll tell you a bit more about the solar controllers. But at the high level, this is a product made by a company called EP Ever. Um, it's $199 for a 40 amp MPPT charge controller with the remote. Uh, monitor that goes inside your coach. That's a huge amount of value. To give you a contrast, our Outback solar unit was about $800 with the remote uh, for the front of our coach. It does have more features. It is an 80 amp charge controller. It is much more robust. It does have cooling fans and a bunch of other things, but um, you could buy four of those for the price of one of those. So that is absolutely an excellent value uh, in our opinion. Before I secure my panels to the roof, I like to think about a number of different things because it's a one-way street when it comes to drilling holes in your roof. First off, we want to figure out our wiring configuration. Now, for this particular job, we're going to be wiring them in series, which means our array is going to be operating at 48 volts. Now, at higher voltage, what's nice is I don't have to run as thick of a wire from the top of the bus to the battery area, because higher voltage means I can get away with using a smaller wire. The downside of using a series wiring like that, uh, wiring configuration like that, is that if one of my panels experiences any amount of shade, I will lose a lot of power out of the array. One other thing to mention, we're actually spacing out our panels by approximately six inches. Now, it really depends on the configuration on whether or not you want to space your panels. On our coach, we chose not to because we wanted to 
get more panels up there in the future. But what we found is because they're so close together, they're really hard to get around. So in this particular case, we're making sure they're just about far enough apart where you can put your foot in them. And that's going to allow us to get around those panels as necessary. Now that we have the basic understanding of where our panels are going to go on the roof and where the wires are going to enter into the coach, we're going to secure our panels to the roof. Now we're using a roofing screw. It's a self-tapping roofing screw with a small rubber uh, seal on it that was provided by the Renology mounting brackets. In addition to that though, we're going to be using a Dicor self-leveling roof sealant, which is specific for the RV industry. Don't go to Home Depot and buy some sealant. Uh, make sure you get Dicor self-leveling sealant or an equivalent that an RV dealership or someone that you know and trust who understands roofs and RVs recommends. Um, we're going to be applying a bit of that sealant underneath the bracket to create a seal in between the bracket and the panel, and then we're going to be screwing in above that. Once we've secured all of the uh, panels, we're going to go back over each screw with additional amounts of die core and then let it level. Because the refrigerator is LP, it has to vent that LP somewhere. And these refrigerators typically vent their exhaust out the roof. There's going to be a large um, exhaust vent on your roof that is for the refrigerator, typically on the uh, side of your refrigerator towards the edge. If you unscrew the four bolts, as you see us doing here from the top, you'll be able to open it up and you'll see essentially right back behind the refrigerator. Once we remove the refrigerator out, we're going to be able to put our wires down through that chase behind the refrigerator, as you see here, and then continue down through the cargo bays, uh, exiting out the back of the cargo bay, and then going along the wire chase, which is underneath the bus, typically down by the chassis, you'll always find a a, a, a chase where all of your existing wires are. We're going to use that existing chase because we know no other uh, mechanics are going to be getting in the way of the wires that are already there because that's how they designed the bus and then dropping into the battery box. Now before we talk about hooking up our wiring and getting the system online, let's talk about safety. Specifically, let's talk about circuit breakers and fuses in our system. On the roof, we have an MC4 inline fuse that will provide safety from the photo array or from the PV array all the way through the wiring that goes to the battery bank. You want to make sure that that wire can't for some reason experience a cut or a short and there's no fuse between your roof array and your battery box. Down below we have a circuit breaker that is in between the array and the solar controller and then a additional 50 amp fuse in between your battery, your house battery systems and your solar charge controller. So three different levels of safety to make sure that you keep yourself from having any issues. In addition to the battery wires that we have to run from the roof to the battery, we also have to run a Cat5 wire from the solar controller, which is also mounted in the uh, battery bank, up to the front where we want to check on how our solar array is performing on a regular basis. So we're using that same exact wire chase, we're just going in the opposite direction of our battery wires all the way up front. So it's been about six weeks. I know I own a lot of these shirts, but it really has been. You can probably tell because the color's a little bit different uh, and the leaves have started to fall for fall. Um, the unit's been performing as described. We've been getting an average of about 28 uh, amps into the system. And that's mainly because it's getting uh, on in, in the year and we're parked with a lot of shade where we are right now. And the sun is very low, but um, the system is definitely uh, had honestly really no problems. The only problem that we did run into is we found out that my father's batteries were not really up to the task. Um, he had 
battery issues long before the solar setup, um, and he just needed more power. We were generating way more solar than we had anywhere to put the power for. So we upgraded his system. We put four brand new six volt, I think they're 265 amp hour batteries into his system, giving him uh, quite a bit more usable storage. We configured all of the systems. This charge controller does allow us to customize the voltage based on the manufactured recommended guidelines for each type of battery, which we really like. Um, and honestly, for $1,200, I'm very happy with this investment. Only time will tell if it's going to last, but so far, so good. Thanks for watching, guys. Please make sure to comment, subscribe, and uh, follow us on the road. We love uh, having you guys join us for all these adventures. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also subscribe to the blog directly on livinglight.net and you'll receive email updates of all of our posts.